Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. You just caught me reading this Nintendo All-Stars magazine and catching up on Nintendo characters again. I do like these characters, but they're only in paper form. I want to see them in 3D plastic form. Nintendo's done it again. Amiibo! Ah, uh, a good old sound to annoy the clerk in the video game section at a Target in the mid-2010s. Amiibo, plastic figures of Nintendo and various other companies' video game characters you can scan into games and see something happen on screen. Launched in 2014 and took off like crazy, fluctuated in popularity over the years, and now are barely talked about in recent memory. Debatedly, they helped Nintendo stay alive during that generation when their usual game sales were much lower than usual. The in-game functionality of these figures has always varied with every game, and almost no games these days have amiibo support. But we're not talking about how the usefulness of these things in games have changed over the years. Nope. Today, I wanted to change things up a bit and talk about my personal experience with Amiibo over the last 10 years, because my reasons for collecting this plastic sh** is much different compared to others, and my Amiibo collection looks microscopic compared to everybody else. I'm sorry, alright? Christmas of 2012. I got a blue Nintendo 3DS XL and Mario Kart 7. In 2013, the year of Luigi, I started getting more new game releases more frequently. Most notably, Mario & Luigi Dream Team, since I love the Mario & Luigi games on the DS. In Christmas 2013, I got the Mario & Luigi Wii U Deluxe set from my grandparents and Super Mario 3D World on Christmas Day. In 2014, I kept up with Mario Kart 8 news for a while because I was so excited, but also stopped a couple months before it released so I wouldn't be too spoiled on everything. When it did release in May of 2014, I loved the game so much I became obsessed with it. I made it a point to unlock all the card parts, even the gold ones, get all the stamps, even get 3 gold stars on all the trophies. And I didn't try to do the latter with most, if not all the Mario Karts prior. I spent a good part of that summer 100%ing the game, while several of my other friends had summer jobs. During that summer, Nintendo also announced their own near-field communication figures, codenamed Nintendo Figurine Platform or NFP for short. They were later revealed to be called Amiibo, which I thought was a confusing name, but I'm not sure what else it could have been called. I thought they looked pretty neat, but I was never really into collecting figurines, so I didn't pay much attention to them prior to launch. Then it was revealed that Mario Kart 8 would be updated to allow support for select Amiibo figures to unlock a character-based racing suit for the Miis in the game. I wasn't too sure what to think about it, but since it was a new thing for the game, I decided to bite the bullet and get the amiibo so I can get the racing suits. I asked for the Mario character amiibo for Christmas so I could use them in Mario Kart 8. Then the game was updated in November 2014 with the first pack of DLC, and I saw that there were more than just Mario characters that worked with the game. So I explained that to my mom, and when we were at Target that December for family Christmas photos, I ended up buying my first amiibo, Kirby. When we got home, I scanned Kirby into the game and played a few races with the new Mii outfit. I think what I liked the most was just scanning the figures and seeing how it affects what's in the game, which was clearly the biggest appeal of all the Toys to Life figures that were at their peak in the 2010s. A few weeks later, we went to Ohio to see my mom's parents a couple weekends before Christmas. When we were there, I got Super Smash Bros for Wii U and the Mario and Peach Amiibo. Smash Wii U was the game the Amiibo originally launched alongside. I wasn't really interested in leveling up the Amiibo characters in that game, just the superfluous racing suits in Mario Kart 8. But when I started playing Smash Wii U, I discovered that the Amiibo were the exact same as the trophies in the game. I thought that was really cool, but I still didn't really care about that game's Amiibo functionality at the time. I didn't think it was bad, and I just didn't feel like playing that part of the game. On Christmas Day 2014, I got the Luigi and Yoshi figures and used them in Mario Kart 8. At that point, I did have half of the amiibo I needed for this update of the game, so that was nice, and I would soon experience the amiibo craze a lot of Nintendo fans were currently experiencing. 
In 2015, I was able to secure the Donkey Kong and Link Amiibo, and all I needed at this point were Captain Falcon, Samus, and Fox. In February, I found out how hard Captain Falcon was to find, and I just couldn't really get a hold of Samus and Fox. I don't remember how hard those were to find, but Captain Falcon was by far the rarest amiibo of the ones I was looking for at that point. This became my life for a few months or so, coming home from school, using my dad's car to go to places like GameStop, Target, Walmart, any store with video games that would be selling amiibo at the time. I didn't have much luck in finding any of these amiibo, and I was getting a little annoyed at it. At this time, I didn't really try any other video game franchises other than Mario. I was mostly playing the Mario characters in regular Smash Bros matches, outside of being classic mode with every character. I was also in denial about what Mario games were good or not. On March 20, 2015, Mario Party 10 launched on the Wii U, and with it came a new line of amiibo, a Super Mario line. These were different from the Smash Bros line, with different bases and poses. They still functioned the same as the Smash Bros line, but still made collectors go wild as you'd expect. I did pick up the game at launch with a bundle that contained a Mario amiibo. I don't have that special box anymore, but I do still have the amiibo and the game. You people already know I have flaws. 10 was actually my first Mario Party game on a home console. My first Mario Party game in general was Mario Party Island Tour on the 3DS, and it wasn't until I downloaded Mario Party 2 on the Wii Virtual Console and got Super Mario Party on the Switch in 2018 that I realized what I was missing out on with the good Mario Party formula. But since I actually used the Mario Amiibo for Mario Party 10, I actually decided to use the Smash Amiibo for Smash Wii U around that time. I thought it was neat and went back to it occasionally, but that's about it. Also around this time, I also finally ordered the final three figures I needed for Mario Kart 8. And at the very beginning of my spring break that year, they came in the mail right as I got home from school and pretty much immediately unboxed them and got the respective Mii Racing suits in the game. I was satisfied to have all the Smash Amiibo I needed and took a break from trying to find any more. But then, in April of 2015, Nintendo revealed all the content with the DLC Pack 2 to be released later that month, and they revealed 9 more Amiibo Racing suits to be unlocked with more Amiibo. I was like, damn it, but accepted it. After the game was updated and I got the 3 gold star trophies with the new tracks, I started going after the new Amiibo for the new costumes. I was able to get some of them rather easily, and the first ones I obtained were Bowser, Toad, and Sonic. I opted for the Mario series Bowser Amiibo instead of the Smash one because there was a Bowser Amiibo board in Mario Party 10, and even though I was starting to use the Smash Bros Amiibo in Smash as Nintendo advertised, I just went with the Mario Amiibo for Bowser because I figured no matter how much I would want to train the Amiibo figures, I'd still have more than just Mario and Luigi to train by the time I got all the Amiibo I needed for MK8. Shortly after another wave of Amiibo released, I was done with junior year of high school and had more time to search for the rest. I was able to get more Amiibo somewhat easily, especially the Mario characters. I remember getting the Mario series Luigi and Peach Amiibo on the same day the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water released on DVD and Blu-ray. I didn't go out every single day looking for Amiibo, don't worry. Luckily around this time, a lot of the rarer Amiibo were being restocked. Even if they weren't being restocked, I only would have gone out and looked for more if I actually had a reason to go out, like with the aforementioned Sponge Out of Water Blu-ray. During the summer, I also got all the amiibo that had a board for MP10, but at this point, I really don't care to play it. I now understand the extreme annoyance of having to constantly pick up the amiibo figure, scan the amiibo figure on the Wii U gamepad to roll the dice, and set the amiibo figure back down over and over and over again. I also used the Wario, Rosalina, and Donkey Kong figures with this game because at the time, the Smash versions were the only amiibo of them, despite having basically amiibo figures for those characters in the game. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker was also updated with amiibo support for the Toad amiibo, adding a hide and seek mode with a pixel toad. And I played that for a while, trying to 100% that game too for some reason. It was summer vacation, so I didn't have much going on when I wasn't helping my dad with the artwork. By the end of the summer, I had all the amiibo I needed for MK8 except for Olimar. That one didn't come out until September 2015 in North America, but it did release in Japan earlier. 
I wanted all the MK8 content before going back to high school, so I was somehow able to convince my mom to import it from Japan to have it as soon as possible. And I ended up getting that figure the night before going back to school, and I luckily had everything in Mario Kart 8 exactly at the time I wanted. And for a while, I was done trying to find any new amiibo. I was nowhere near obsessed with amiibo like pretty much every other Nintendo fan was at that time. I wasn't aware of various amiibo stories like some guy hate buying all the Rosalina amiibo out of spite because he didn't want other fans to have her, or when Ness was GameStop exclusive and all the pre-orders for him ended up crashing GameStop's website. I'm glad I had that restraint. I bought Super Mario Maker on the Wii U the day it came out, but none of the other amiibo that launched alongside it. Not even the 8-bit Mario amiibo for the 30th anniversary of the original Super Mario Bros game. I just didn't really feel like it. I did scan some of the amiibo I did already have into the game to get costumes, which I thought was really cool. I didn't get Yoshi's Wooly World, which had the same amiibo functionality, but I think that was because I was just busy at the time with high school related things. I did mostly keep up with Nintendo news and some amiibo news, but not all of it. I did see the Animal Crossing amiibo figures and cards released for Happy Home Designer and Amiibo Festival, but not the Chibi Robo amiibo released alongside Chibi Robo Ziplash. That same year, Smash 3DS was updated to allow amiibo support, but at the time, I only had the 3DS XL, not the new 3DS which has a built-in NFC reader to scan amiibo. So for Christmas that year, I got the white hockey puck that scans Amiibo for the older 3DS models to try to use Amiibo for that game. I tried using my level 50 Mario Amiibo for that game, but the Amiibo itself didn't really work the way I heard it would from the rumors I heard online, so ever since then, I got no use out of this thing, and I wonder why I even have it at this point since I now have the new 3DS which has the reader built in. In 2016, I mostly coasted along with the Wii U games I had, but did buy some more 3DS games, most notably Mario & Luigi Paper Jam, and even bought both the 3DS and Wii U versions of Mario & Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. I didn't use the amiibo functionality for any of those games though. I did see other figures like the new Splatoon figures, the Kirby line of amiibo that released alongside Kirby Planet Robobot on the 3DS, the DLC characters from Smash 4, and the new wave of Mario figures that released alongside Mario Party Star Rush, but I didn't buy any of those at that time. I did get Star Rush for Christmas that year, but didn't see what the amiibo would do. But with the release of the new Mario amiibo for Star Rush, I wonder why they didn't go back to Mario Party 10 and make new boards for characters that didn't have amiibo before, like Daisy, Waluigi, or Boo. But now I realize that would have been a bad idea and nobody would have played them. But then, in March 2017, the Nintendo Switch launched. I got a Switch as a present from my parents to celebrate getting through my freshman year of college. The game I got with it was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, because I was still in that Mario phase of my life. I loved experiencing the Switch for the first time. I also read up on the new content in 8 Deluxe and found there would be an Inkling Me costume unlocked with any Splatoon amiibo. So when I got the game, I rescanned all my amiibo to get the racing suits again. I got this Inkling Boy amiibo to get the racing suit for Splatoon, and I got this Digby amiibo. I heard an incorrect statement online that there would be another Animal Crossing related suit that could be unlocked with any Animal Crossing amiibo, as well as a 200cc mirror mode for the Grand Prix. Both of those statements were absolutely f***ing fake, and Digby was the amiibo I got the least use of. But for the longest time, this was my amiibo collection. I didn't get any more figures for a while. As much as I was looking forward to Super Mario Odyssey, I didn't buy the Mario Odyssey amiibo since the additions they added were very superfluous and I already 100%ed this game numerous times without the amiibo. I know, I bought this Mario Odyssey strategy guide but plastic figures are where I draw the line. When I got Splatoon 1 on the Wii U in 2018, I scanned the Inkling Boy amiibo and thought I would try the levels at some point. I decided to try the amiibo levels after I beat the story mode. I never beat the story mode and I never got beyond seeing the effect on screen when I scanned the amiibo. In 2018, Nintendo announced and released Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and with it, they said that the previously released amiibo would be compatible with this game, 
and they would be releasing more amiibo figures for the new and returning fighters that weren't in Smash 4, like the Ice Climbers, alongside transferring any save data from Smash 4 over to Ultimate in some way. This was great news, but at the time I hardly took advantage of it. I did scan some amiibo I had into this game from time to time, and I thought that it was cool that I can reuse them, but it was strange how a level 50 amiibo transferred over as level 12. Not 13? But I was still content with my current amiibo collection at the time, but I wasn't prepared for what was going to happen next. Overcompensation. In 2020, when I got Animal Crossing New Horizons, I tried using the Digby amiibo, but it didn't work the way I thought it would at that time. I think the issue was because I used it before all the major content updates, and by the time it did receive all the new updates, I fell off the game hard and never went back into it. So it probably has use for the amiibo figures and cards now, I just don't really feel like going back and trying it considering how much I fell off. I still enjoyed playing it when I did, but even when I go back, I barely felt like playing it for longer than 20 minutes. However, going back to a game I did play for longer than 20 minutes, Smash Ultimate. That summer, they started releasing the DLC characters for the second Fighters Pass, the first one being Min Min from ARMS. I loved keeping up with the Smash Ultimate DLC characters. One day I fell asleep listening to the Smash Bros presentations, and when I woke up, I watched a couple of various YouTube videos about Amiibo, and got the urge to collect all the major Smash Amiibos so I could use them in Ultimate. I did have a job at this time, so I had more money to blow, so I decided, eh, fuck it. I left later that day and went to a few stores to find Amiibo. I went to my local 5 below and found Zero Suit Samus. I also saw a bunch of Animal Crossing amiibo there, but those weren't what I needed and didn't want to play amiibo festival. I also went to Best Buy and found Crom and Pichu, and that was all I found that day. But I didn't try any more visits to stores after that because I knew there were a lot of older amiibo that wouldn't be found at Walmart very easily, so I knew just to order them online from there on out. So I made a list of what I was missing at the time to keep track of which ones I needed and went to Amazon to start ordering them. I ordered just one or two at a time to not spend too much money at once. Instead of purchasing them in an order that made sense like the Smash Ultimate character roster, I looked up the order the ways of Amiibo originally released and decided to order them that way to be a bit different. When I ordered the Pikachu Amiibo, it was used for a cheaper price, and after it arrived, the black ring around the bottom came apart. So from that point forward, whenever I ordered something on Amazon, I always made sure they were new or used like new if I could. And ever since, I'd say all my Amiibo have been in pretty good condition. And since I purchased a lot of the older ones much later, some of them became pricey as hell. Because going to hell comes at a price. As I was collecting the older amiibo, Nintendo released more Smash amiibos, starting with Joker and Hero. I pre-ordered them from GameStop, but when I went to pick them up, they said the figures were shipped to my house. But I couldn't help myself and bought more copies of the figures they had in stock. When I got home, the ones I pre-ordered had indeed arrived, so I ended up re-gifting the ones I bought at GameStop to a friend of mine who also had a Switch. After that, I just continued getting more amiibo and scanning them into Ultimate to give them a name. By early 2021, I finished getting all the Smash amiibo I needed and were available at that time. I didn't have the female Corrin, Rob Famicom colors, Bayonetta 1 Bayonetta, or alternate cloud costumes. But those weren't the Player 1 amiibo, and the Player 1 amiibo were the only ones I really needed. Nintendo was also releasing Cat Mario and Cat Peach Amiibo alongside Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, and even though there was an exclusive invincibility power-up locked behind the former, I didn't really feel like getting either Amiibo. I had enough Mario series Amiibo anyway. In March 2021, the Amiibo for Banjo-Kazooie, Terry, and Byleth released, and I got them after work, and after that, there weren't any new Smash Bros. Amiibo for a whole year so I didn't collect any more figures for a while. I got Min Min alongside the release of Nintendo Switch Sports, and Steve and Alex were slated for later that year. That summer, I was looking back at 2017, the launch year of the Switch, the year of Seasons 10 and 11 and Spongebob, the year I learned about the Jimmy Neutron Revival Project, and the year Mario Sports Superstars released on the 3DS the same month as The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This game was extremely generic, and I never felt like buying it. 
but similar to the Animal Crossing Amiibo cards, they also released sports Amiibo cards for every character and sport. The cards had odd and confusing in-game functionality, but what made them fascinating at all was the fact that a good majority of the cards had reused renders of the characters from previous games with sports balls or horses photoshopped next to them. And after seeing videos online talking about that game and the cards, I did more than bite the bullet. Hell, this time I chewed it up and decided to get the Amiibo cards for Mario Sports Superstars. I also bought the game because it came with a free card inside, and it would feel weird to have the cards this game inspired, but not the game itself. These cards were so easy to get a hold of. I was able to get a lot of 22 packs of cards on eBay for $50. Nobody cared about the game when it launched, and especially not now. It wasn't a big deal to get all the cards here. I even got the binder that released only in Japan to keep the cards in. I also played the game to see how bad it actually was, and it was indeed boring and lacking in personality compared to a Mario Sports game like Mario Super Sluggers on the Wii. I also got Steve and Alex when they launched in September 2022. I only wanted Steve since he was player 1 and Alex was player 2, but I still kept both for a while. In 2023, I got Sephiroth, Kazuya, Pyra, and Mithra when they came out and still waited for Sora. Nintendo finally confirmed the Sora Amiibo in September 2023 for release in February 2024. And while I was happy the Sora Amiibo was finally confirmed, I hated that Nintendo took this long to confirm its existence, and I didn't think they should have waited until 2024 to release it. But come that day, I bought my own Sora Amiibo and had the entire line of Super Smash Bros. Amiibo that I cared about and was very satisfied with that. And it was also when I finally got my hands on Sora that I realized 2024 was the 10 year anniversary of Amiibo. And while that's still an insane fact, and it does feel full circle to an extent, the impatient old man in me still felt they could have released Sora in 2023. Nintendo still had Amiibo to be released in 2024 anyway, so why not? Regardless, I scanned Sora into the game, leveled him up with two matches, and then started to look back at old Amiibo videos on YouTube and even some new ones. And unfortunately, the Mario fanboy in me got the better of me, and I ended up buying the Mario Amiibo for characters I didn't have. Specifically, I got the ones that released alongside Star Rush in 2016, and Mario & Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions in 2017. I still don't have the 8-bit Mario Amiibo, but who knows? If Nintendo does something special in 2025 for Mario's 40th anniversary, maybe I'll ponder the idea of getting them. But I also wanted to try out a couple things from games I know have Amiibo support, so... Nowadays, I'm very satisfied with my Amiibo collection. I don't really have a favorite Amiibo per se, but I do still love the clear detail and passion put into them. For the Smash line, that is. For the Mario line, I'd say I like Waluigi the best, but that's only because there's no Smash figure of Waluigi, so it's satisfying to finally have an Amiibo of him after all these years. And I like how this Diddy Kong Amiibo has a barrel. But for the Smash line, I will say that one of my favorites for sure is Rob, because it feels really cool and surreal to own a miniature Rob the Robot because he was the character packed in with the original Nintendo Entertainment System in 1985 to get it on store shelves, so I love having that character in toy form in some way. I also really like the Mr. Game & Watch amiibo, because he comes with three different poses if you don't want to just look at the same regular one over and over again. And I also love how they managed to pull off characters that looked like something would be floating, like the Luma on the Rosalina amiibo, or how they managed to make Captain Falcon balance just like he is. I like the whips on Simon and Richter, and the waves underneath Joker. I don't have the Alex amiibo anymore because within the year, I was dared to destroy something I don't use anymore, so I destroyed that figure. I do need to get more shells for the figures though, considering how crowded the game shelf alone is. And I also try to store them and move them as carefully as I can, because some of them feel like they could break off so easily. 
like Diddy Kong's tail or Wii Fit Trainer in general. Hell, I actually did drop my original Bowser Jr. amiibo, and I guess I lost the hot glue gun somehow, so I just hastily bought another one. I also thought I lost my other Pikachu amiibo, so I bought another before I actually did find the original a month later, because I was desperate to make sure I had a full set of what I needed. So that means I've ordered three Pikachu amiibo before, which means I'd have three nickels. But overall, I do still love how the amiibo looks in general, even the ones I don't have. I have seen how rare some amiibo are, like the QB or the Yarn Yoshi, and it's not just for that reason I don't feel like getting them, it's because of how superfluous most amiibo support is that I just don't really feel like getting any more figures. I also don't own some games that use amiibo like Word Puzzles by Poggy or the Japanese exclusive Wii U Taiko game, so I don't really care to use amiibo for that. Even if I ever manage to get Yoshi's Woolly World on Wii U, I already have more than enough amiibo to scan into it if I want to take advantage of that. Sometimes, I do still get the urge to go back to Smash Ultimate and level up the amiibo, but that's only in my spare time. And Smash is the game these things were originally created for, so at least I was smart with how I decided to go back and collect amiibo. For the most part. And that's pretty much everything I can say about my amiibo. I had fun collecting the figures I currently own, even though I've never been much of a guy to display the figures of whatever it is he collects, but since this was around the time I started to get more into video games, I think that that also played a key factor in it. I may not have tried to get every amiibo as they came out, or every amiibo in general, but it's good to know your limits. And I know my collection isn't as impressive as others, but I'm happy I finally had a chance to talk about it. And sure, you can call me a weenie for collecting these things, but these days, everybody's a weenie in some way, and you know it. So what do you think of that?